So Karen, what is it that you actually remember of the early days of this project? That was a while ago. It was, yes, I think that it was 2012. Um, I remember you and I going, going along to the uh, European Institute of Gender Equality's offices in Vilnius and sitting, sitting with, with, with those colleagues where we had already made our pitch, we got the kind of project and thinking, oh my God, what, what are we going to do? It was just such an enormous project, the idea of you know, 28 countries, you know, 100 different organisations kind of doing, doing that work. And we'd had, you know, it was a kind of two-year project, um, and we had 28 researchers in 28 countries. And even when I think about that now, I just think of how enormous it was, but actually how brilliant, how brilliant it was. To and interestingly, I think the, the whole process of networking with these uh, 28 different places and more than 28 people, actually, who were involved, how I was always surprised how you managed to actually coordinate that. So yeah. what was the challenge? I was surprised at how I managed to coordinate that, actually. And in fact, we, we, kind of talk, we talked subsequently about doing that kind of cross-cultural work and how, and how we work as, as, as colleagues across those different domains. And I think, that, I think what worked is because we're all really motivated and because the, the point about the book, or the point about the project which has led to the book, is it was the first effort, wasn't it? It was the first time that we actually had look, mapped the European media landscape to look at where women were in decision-making positions, where women and men kind of represented in content. And the, the, the effort, I guess, of media industries to try and encourage kind of women's career development through their policies. So I think for us, we were just thinking, this is a brilliant project because it's the first time anyone is actually looking at this and actually being able to gather together, you know, a, data across the whole of the European Union. Yeah, I agree. I think we were partly motivated by this, inspired by the fact that similar projects had been done but not at a in a systematic manner yeah. in the European context. So that really was a contribution that, that the team could bring. And also I think, it, at least to me, the, the high motivation was to see that European institutions were taking a commitment, they were making a commitment on this, so the Irish presidency of the European Union being interested in particularly this, this whole theme of yeah. gender and media. And also the fact that they were not only looking at content, which we actually did, we did the monitoring, but also looking at how decision-making positions and managerial positions allow women to actually make a difference and, and that remains still kind of an open uh, issue. Uh, nevertheless, some of the chapters are showing where is it under what condition you know, yeah. that difference could be made, so that is also interesting. We've talked a little bit about you know, the kind of background to, to the, the project and a bit about the project itself, so maybe we can talk a bit about what the content of the book is because it draws pretty, not entirely from the project because it has other things. Maybe we could just say something about mm -hmm. its, the, the kind of yeah. organisation of the book. Organisation and, and actually what we have decided um, I think was uh, how, how to present to a broader public and particularly the scholarly community this kind of work uh, which has only been channeled uh, in a minor portion through the European institutions yeah. so the risk was that some of those data, some of that knowledge would not reach uh, a broader public. So the structure of the blue book reflects this kind of concern. So actually there is a first part which is pretty much the main results yeah. of the project, including some of the overview and survey that has been done on uh, European policies uh, or uh, different provisions that have been adopted by different institutions. And then of course the, the main part of uh, the research project itself, including this uh, analysis that has been done on uh, women and men in decision-making position. Mm -hmm but also the monitoring uh, phase that has been <coughs> conducted and was never published. So some of the content in the book is actually something that has never yes. been published before. And that, that's also very important because it still reflects this kind of broad European 28 countries uh, overview and, and we have nothing like this uh, to make comparison. And also, and then the second part is actually a collection of a number of uh, chapters. And in that case, uh, we didn't include all the countries, right? Yep. I think that we've got uh, 16 out of the 28 countries. Um, inevitably, people kind of move on, don't they? And you know, there's there's much more of a there's kind of time commitment to 
kind of contributing a, a chapter. Um, and I think, I mean, I think that you're right. So, but I think it does more than simply look at a country by country kind of a case study. It, it does do that, but I think each of the individual chapters kind of just broaden the kind of context, don't they? Reaching. And I think so. Partly, it's about the data that we kind of collected collectively, um, but also it's actually trying to kind of provide a, a broader framework in each of those nations and each of those kind of national case studies. I think, and the other thing that it that it does really well is it kind of provides an overview of of the field. But doing those two things, coming to having representation and and production coming together, and that's actually quite unusual because most books on gender and media either look at representation or they look at, at, at production or they look at audience. I think we didn't look at audience but we did actually try and make a relationship between who's making decisions in the media and then what we actually see in, in terms of content and I think that's it actually yeah. makes a really valuable contribution in that in that sense. And as you say I think some of the, the enrichment that comes with the chapter is that it's actually most of them they build on this bringing together representation and also uh, decision making but at the same time they bring some of the valuable insights from the different countries including good practices for instance. So it really is an attempt to bring together all the different aspects which need to be understood when we're dealing with, with gender and media and gender equality in that context. So, yes. So maybe, maybe just lastly, we might say something about um, how how the data has actually been used, how our findings have been used by organisations, by academics. Because where there was a kind of there was a launch, wasn't there? When we kind of you know, in terms of the the first time everything was kind of available. Um, what, what I mean is, what 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 would you say is is one of the kind of the, the, the main mm, ways say, in which data have been used. You know, lights and shades uh, in that sense. Uh, for us, I think it was important uh, the fact that the European Institute for Gender Equality was taking this uh, as part of their institutional commitment. Mm. So there was a formal adoption by the European Council of not only the report but the indicators, which we felt was some kind of a commitment yeah. made by the state. So at that level, we I don't think we can say at the stage uh, that much has happened in formal institutional spaces. But on the other side, I think, and this is also why the book is so important, because it is uh, speaking to a much broader audience, mm. uh, not just uh, scholars, uh, uh, but also the, the professional associations and practitioners and journalists. Uh, so we do hope that this is going to be valuable content for them. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I guess that we'll, we'll see, won't we? We'll see how the book is adopted. You know, hopefully everyone who's watching this on YouTube is going to rush out and buy it because obviously it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, time will tell because what we know is that it has the, we, we developed indicators, gender equality indicators. We developed three indicators. Those have been adopted by the European um, Union whether or not how they're implemented by broadcasters and by kind of print uh, and radio, who, who knows. But w what we can do is we can actually find the data, we can write it up, we can make an analysis, but really it's down to the media as an industry to actually take this, this seriously. Yes, though I think something that we also learned through the project is that the media do move and they adopt policies and they try to, to make change whenever there are a number of conditions, including some pressures from the, the public, uh, mm. uh, from public organization, from and associational unions. Uh, uh, associations. So in that sense, I think it's interesting also to think that the book is coming out at the time where across Europe there are some networks uh, of not only scholars but professionals that are evolving. And some of these, they're linked to this uh, UNESCO initiative, the Global Alliance yeah. for Media and Gender. So now there is a European chapter that was not there two years ago when the project was uh, completed. So it will be interesting to see how some of this knowledge uh, may also be channeled through those uh, spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm.